Hi everyone, I'm Ed Simila. I'm a PhD student at the Grantham Institute at Imperial College London, and I'm a climate negotiator for Article 6 here at COP29. And this is the Experts Corner, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by Mr. Akihito Aki uh, Nishio, the World Bank's Vice President for Development mm -hmm. Finance, mm -hmm. uh, DFI. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. My pleasure as well. <laughs> so, mm. Since we're at COP29, mm -hmm. and I'm a big fan of everything the World Bank has been doing so uh, far uh -huh. to advance negotiations yeah. and development. So I have some yeah. questions. So uh -huh. first thing regarding mm -hmm. strategic priorities. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the key strategic priorities mm -hmm. of the IDA in addressing mm -hmm. climate change? Mm -hmm. And how do these align mm -hmm. with global climate goals? Sure. Uh, Elsie, thank you very much for having me and really appreciate this opportunity. Pleasure. And um, so to answer your question, um, I think one major priority that uh, IDA has is to help the poor countries uh, with adaptation. You know, and uh, I think the, there's a real lack of um, mm -hmm. adaptation funds in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, these poor countries are very vulnerable to climate change, you know, in terms of droughts, floods, coastal erosion. You know, there are many different ways that uh, these countries get affected negatively by climate. And IDA can help with all of these things, you know, through infrastructure, mm -hmm. agriculture, water resource management, all sorts of things. So that is a major a priority for us and I think it fits well with the uh, with the way the whole world is going in addressing climate issues. What are the biggest challenges you face okay. as a young climate advocate and uh, how can organizations like the World Bank help in your work? Well I'm gonna keep it concise and very straight to the point. <laughs> yes. I think I can summarize my challenges in three. So first access to data as a young climate advocate, if you want to do projects, we don't have access to data. And I think resources provided by the World Bank have been very helpful in us accessing information, mm -hmm. especially about least developing countries. You were just talking about you right. know, poor right. countries, and mm -hmm. it's important for us to advance mm -hmm. technologies mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. The second thing is outreach. We also have a big problem in outreach, and the World Bank, mm -hmm. Connect for Climate, and the team has been very helpful in advancing the causes that we work for, mm -hmm. giving us a platform to talk about the issues mm -hmm. that matter mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. And third thing is, mainly giving us hope. Whenever we read the reports, there's never you know a dead end. There's always hope and the option to go further. Yeah. So I think it can be summarized no, okay. like this. Okay, that's great. That's great, great to know. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. So it's like the, so yeah. far, I'm a big fan of yeah. the reports. They help me a lot in my research uh, and right. I use them uh -huh. coming here. Mm -hmm. So with regards to clean energy, and mm -hmm. I'm a big mm -hmm. proponent on, mm -hmm. of renewable energies, mm -hmm. what specific initiatives does IDA mm -hmm. have to promote clean energy solutions mm -hmm. in low-income countries? Right. So uh, we do have a whole series of um, projects okay. that promote, support uh, clean energy. Uh, for instance, a, a project in St. Lucia, this is an island country in the Caribbean. Okay. We have a geothermal project. Okay. Uh, and it, it also addresses uh, a gender gap in the employment of the country. So, so we are hitting several uh, birds with one stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have those kinds of, um, of projects, but I think the uh, one, pro one program that I'd like to highlight is what we call M300, which is really giving uh, countries in uh, Africa with access mm -hmm. to electricity in a clean way. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, you know, there are 600 million people okay. in Africa who do not have access to electricity. Oh. And in order for them to uh, generate um, uh, jobs and, you know, to really uh, uh, to spur growth. You need power, you need electricity, but you want to do it in a clean exactly. way. So, so we, are, we have started on that program. Awesome, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's it for us. Thank you so much, Mr. Aki, for joining me. Yeah. It's a big pleasure. And thank you so much for tuning in.